Hi, today we'll be taking a look at URL monitoring using SCOM 2016, um, but many, much of this will apply to SCOM 2012 R2 as well. Um, so what we have here, we're looking at the um, pretty much the start screen once you launch um, the Operation Manager console. So what we're going to do is go over to authoring. And in the authoring console, we want to go up and expand the manager pack template section. So as far as URL monitoring, um, there are um, two primary options. So we have web application availability monitoring, and we have web application transaction monitoring. Um, so if you need just basic URL monitoring where you want to just go and hit a URL and report back on if that URL responded or not, and maybe some performance metrics and you don't have a requirement to authenticate, uh, we can use the web application availability monitoring. So let's go ahead and just show a little bit how that works. So what you'll do, we we'll go ahead and click on web application availability monitoring. You can see in, in my lab here that we're looking at, I actually have um, one already created. Uh, but what we're going to do, we'll go ahead and create a new one. So we'll click on the, um, you, there's a couple ways to get to it. So you can click on add monitoring wizard on the right hand side. Or from the left hand side, you can right click and also click on add monitoring wizard. So we're going to go ahead and click on add monitoring wizard. After a few seconds, that should pop up the monitoring wizard. So in here, we want to go ahead and select the web application availability monitoring option. And then click next. All right, so once that comes up, um, we want to give it a name. So for this, I'm going to just say lab um, test web application availability monitoring. All right, and then you also can provide a more detailed description on, on what you're doing. Next, we need to save it to a manager pack. So for the purpose of this, I'm going to actually just create a new manager pack. Say new. I'll use that same name and say next. And then you can create knowledge. Um, I often don't use this functionality within the product, um, but um, you can if you have the appropriate plugins and things installed. Um, I, I don't have those installed in my lab for this particular environment. So go ahead and say create. So this may take several seconds uh, for this to generate. So um, um, We'll give it a few few seconds here to generate that. All right, so once that finished generating the new manage pack, we have it listed there, and we can go ahead and say next again. So now in this screen is where we can go ahead and type in the URLs that we want to monitor. So, so you go ahead and put in your URL. So in this case, I'm going to use Microsoft.com. Um, so these can be internal sites or they can be sites external to your environment. So they can be sites that you may have hosted in a, like Azure or AWS somewhere or they can be out on the public internet or it can be only internal. Um, the, the main thing is that as long as your watcher node, which I'll get into a little bit in a minute here, um, what that is, as long as the watcher node can reach the site, um, that's, the, that's the main point. All right, so go ahead and say next. Um, my environment is thinking about it a little bit. I have a little busy signal down here in the corner, so give that a few seconds. Should clear up. All right, so now on this this screen is where you select your watcher node that you'll um, perform the monitoring from. So a watcher node can be any agent with any system within your environment that has a SCOM agent on it can perform the function of a watcher node. So say if you want to monitor an internal website and you have users from all over the country, all over the U.S. or all over the world um, within your organization accessing that website, uh, say if you have um, some servers or representative servers or agents in the west coast of the U.S. and the east coast of the U.S. and maybe some over in Europe, you can specify those three different locations to be watcher nodes, and then they will test and um, report on essentially user experience on hitting that site. So if there are some network connectivity issues going on only in Europe, 
um, that watch and know will probably uh, start generating errors and let you know that hey there's there's a problem you may want to look at and then that your end users um, in the Europe area may be impacted by that all right so what I'm going to do here um, so once you hit search um, you can select internal location which will be just any system that has an agent on it within your environment or you can use a resource pool so the resource pool will be the resource pools that are configured in SCOM and your resource pools may consist of various different management servers or gateways within your environment um, that can collectively monitor monitor um, that particular website. So for the purpose of, of this example, I'm actually going to just use an agent. So let's go and um, pick a few agents. So I'm going to say I'm going to pick this orchestrator server and I'll pick this SQL server. And I'll also pick the SCOM server, one of the SCOM servers as well for this test, and then say OK. All right, so it, that'll add in those three, and then I click Next, and then just keep showing me a list of what it's going to do. So as you can see here, there's <clears throat> one for each watcher node. So each one of these watcher nodes will independently test this website to verify that it can get to it, and then um, report back various different metrics that I can configure. So down here at the bottom, we can configure how frequently we want it that this, these tests to be performed. So we can say, hey, we want to perform every 10 minutes. So every 10 minutes, those these three um, watcher nodes will go out and hit Microsoft.com and report back if it's able to get to it successfully or not. Um, we also can go to change configuration, and there's a whole slew of other options that you can enable. Um, so starting here at the top. The test frequency so we can uh, again we by default it's 10 minutes but that is configurable you can do every couple seconds every minutes every hours every days normally I don't really recommend testing like every every second or anything like that with this um, so every few minutes is fine though uh, but you do have that option but um, typically I don't recommend doing that um, and then also over here on the right hand side here you can have um, it go and collect various different performance metrics every 10 minutes or every interval that it goes and perform a test. Um, you can also stagger that. So say for example, uh, you don't want to collect the metrics every t every um, time it goes and performs tests. Maybe you want to do that only every every other time it hits or, or maybe once an hour or whatever the interval you want. You can kind of configure that. So in this case, if I have a test frequency of every 10 minutes, I can say that I want to collect performance data every 20 minutes, for example. So like every second test, it'll collect the performance metrics on the, on the results of that. Or you can leave it at one and then every time it performs tests, connectivity tests, it'll also collect those performance metrics every single time. Other thing you can do, you can set up how you, what do you want to be alerted on? Um, there's a few different things. So if you want to just simply track if the page um, um, responded or not, right? If you got a greater than or equal or over 400 code, then you want to generate an alert. So there's um, various different options. You click the um, little arrow here. Um, so it has a lot of the HTTP status codes um, listed here. So you can pick any one of those individual independently um, if you're looking for one particular one. Or um, by default, um, anything greater than or equal to a status code of 400 will generate an error. Other options you have if you want to check the perform or test the performance and responsiveness of that particular page, you can enable transaction response time alerting. Um, so what that will do is say if your page takes longer than 10 seconds to load, um, you could generate an alert to that or um, whatever you want to configure that to. Um, so it's maybe you have a, a, a requirement to say, hey, we want most pages to load within five seconds or three seconds or whatever the interval is. You can configure that here and it will track that. And anytime you find um, any of the tests are beyond that threshold, you will get an alert that will pop up. Um, in the SCOM console. All right. Other options, you can do something what we call a content match. And what that is, what it'll do, it'll look at the text that's on the page. So if you're expecting like a particular word or or phrase or, or whatever it may be to be present on the page, and if it's not there, you can you can you can cause this to generate an alert due to that. Or if something that sh you, that shouldn't be there is there, then you can also do the do that as well. So you have various different operators that you can do. So you can say um, it equals content match equal a certain thing. Um, so I would say you probably will rarely use that, but um, you'll probably be using more so um, matches or contain um, as long as it contains like those particular phrases or words that you're looking for. Then you may want to um, 
generating an alert. So for example, if the page has the word error on it uh, and, or something like that, when it, when it runs, you may want to generate an alert because of that. All right. And then check for redirect. So um, that's, that's an option as well. So going a little bit further down, there's a, as you can see, there's a lot more options here. Um, so with the alerting, you have two different states, right? So you have critical state and you have the warning state. So for example, say if a status code greater than 400, that may be a critical condition, but maybe a transaction response time that's a little slow, but say the page did respond, but it responded slow, you may want to make that a warning to just um, let your whoever is responsible for that site know that, hey, the site is working, it's up and running, but hey, yes, yeah, it's, it's responding a little bit slower than normal. Um, so that's something you can do as well. And then, and again, those same options that we saw for the critical, you can kind of configure those for the warning if you wanted to have a warning state. All right. So going down a little more, you have other options where you can say, okay, this the test needs to fail X number of times before I'm going to generate alert. So say if it hit the page, it fails the first time, another two minutes go by, the second time is successful, maybe you don't want to generate an alert because of that. So you can have an option where you can say, hey, it needs to fail two times consecutively or three times or whatever the, your number or requirement is before you'll generate an alert. And then these other check boxes as we go a little bit further down, generate alerts from each test. So that means um, as, as we have these various different tests up here, these check boxes, we can have an individual alert fire for the different conditions. Um, for example, so um, status code failure would be an alert, um, content match would be a different alert, um, transaction response time slow would be a different alert. Um, so maybe those need to go to different teams uh, to remediate or investigate the issue. You can kind of separate those out into ind independent alerts. Um, and then also you can do a generate a single summary alert, we'll, which will um, kind of have um, multiple of those things kind of jungle up together and not broken out into individual pieces. All right. So if you go down, um, as, as you click on this, so this option means that if one or more tests from a location fails, a single summary alert will be generated. So what that means in the case of, so in this case, I set up three independent watcher nodes, right? Um, so by default, if I didn't check this box, what will happen, I would get an individual alert from each one of those three sites um, that are performing the test if, if they fail. So they will respond independent of each other. Um, with the summary alert, um, if any of them fail, you'll get a gen gen generic summary alert saying, hey, that something failed. Um, so you, can, you have some flexibility on how you do that. Um, typically, I, I normally leave it um, without the summary alert. That way, I, it's in the case, say we have one on the west coast of the U.S., one on the east coast of the U.S., and one over in Europe, I'll know specifically which one of those failed when that alert came in. And I'll see, I'll get an alert from the west coast or from Europe or whichever one that failed for that particular test is, is where I get the alert from. So let's continue on down the list. Um, see, there's, there's a lot of stuff here. So, um, so as I mentioned, um, at that top option up here at the top here, um, performance data collection interval, we can collect performance metrics every every interval or we can spread that out. Um, down here near the bottom of the page is where we configure that. Um, so by default, there's a few boxes checked on metrics that will collect by default. So transaction response time. Um, so every time it goes and hits the page, it'll, it'll, it'll capture what that transaction response time was. And then um, you can kind of trend that and look at that data over time because um, it'll collect all those all, all those data points every time it goes and perform the test. Um, other things you can collect is response time for the base page, um, TCP connect time, time the first byte, time the last byte, DNS resolution time, et cetera, et cetera. You can kind of check and um, check the ones that you care about. Um, so for example, um, maybe a transaction response time is slow, but maybe most of the time was spent with DNS resolution time. Maybe the DNS was performing um, was slow in the return the result, and that was the bulk of the wait for the request. Um, like by collecting these metrics, you can kind of start um, seeing those um, patterns or trends and, and start evaluating what, where you may be able to improve. All right, so keep continue going down. So by default, we allow redirect. So most most websites today, um, well, I won't say most, but um, a, a lot of time you may hit, you may hit, say if you hit Microsoft.com, you may get redirected as soon as you hit that to like www.microsoft.com. 
Um, so allow redirects allows that whatever the, the site is designed to naturally redirect you to other URLs, it, it will allow that. Um, if you uncheck that, um, it'll only really test that first page that it hits. And then if, if the page has a redirect somewhere else, um, it won't honor that it, and it won't test that particular piece of it. Um, so other things you can do, um, change the HTTP version. I normally just leave these at default. Don't normally change either one of those. Um, you can do get, head, or put posts um, as far as um, the method. Um, uh, again, for these, I normally don't change those. I'll leave those as is. And then also, um, if you want, you can kind of um, play with the HTTP headers that the 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 watcher notes will present themselves as if you wanted to um, kind of test various different scenarios. Um, but but again, these I normally don't play with these that much. Um, but if you have like a specific, say if your site is going to direct to different sites based on um, browsers that it detects and things like that, you can you can play with the headers and kind of um, pretty much simulate various different headers that you're going to send to the web application and then see how it reacts to, to those um, various different requests. And then finally down here at the bottom, if you have a, um, if your SCOM agents um, can't directly access out to the internet, um, you can configure them to use a proxy. So here you'll check the box, specify the, the address for the proxy server, as well as the port that they'll, they should be using. But for, for my purpose, I won't, I won't do any of that. All right. And so once you've configured all of your settings here, um, oh, one other thing I, I didn't mention in this one up here, the test timeout. Um, so um, if the time, if here's like how long it'll wait to get a response and, and things like that from between tests. So if whatever test takes longer than 45 seconds, then it'll kill that particular interval of the test. It won't hold up resources on the watcher node, um, continually trying that. It'll it'll give up, and, and then it'll wait for the next interval to to try it again, and then give you the results. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay, and say next. So that'll give me kind of a brief summary of what it's going to create, and then I hit create. All right, so while, while it's great, this could take, um, could take anywhere for a few seconds. It could potentially take a few minutes. It just depends on your environment, how busy it is, and, and things like that. Because what's going to happen in the background is going to write out um, all the configurations that we just created into the new manager pack. And then it's going to start generating new configuration for all the agents that need to be participating. And also, there will be quite a few updates in databases being created. Um, new monitors will be created. Um, <clears throat> so it seemed like we didn't change a whole lot. But like in the background, um, SCOM is actually going to be performing um, a lot of work and a lot of um, things that's creating um, from that template. So we'll give that a few minutes, and we'll be right back. All right, so after that finish, um, back in the web application availability monitoring section, you'll see that new um, test that we created created there. It would just be listed there. And uh, as, as I mentioned, what will happen in the background, um, those systems that I specify to be washer node, they will get new configuration data that will tell them to start performing those tests. Um, so it'll be a kind of a few minutes before that activated, uh, but then going forward, they'll, they'll start performing those tests. Um, so in order to see the results of those tests um, and see if those have actually started activating, we can go back to monitoring. And if we go down, uh, actually, where is that at? Maybe near the top. I'm trying to remember what's the name. I think it's under application monitoring. I have a lot of um, stuff in here. Let's close that down. Here we go. Web application availability monitoring. Then we go to test state. You start seeing the status of all of our tests as they start activating. So I have a lot of um, uh, legacy tests and things in here that I haven't um, removed. So you see a lot of them that are kind of um, grayed out right now. Since so a lot of those tests, I'm not performing those tests anymore or um, the original watcher node that I configured to, that was supposed to perform those tests, I may have removed those from the environment over time. Um, but so let's go and take a look here. So you can see here uh, our um, three new ones are, um, they're currently not monitored. Um, so they have been generated, um, but just the, the nodes here have not activated those tests yet. Um, so once they have activated and initialized, these should go to monitor. 
and then we should start seeing a, a health state like either healthy critical warning um, whatever the state is of the test all right so that may take a, a little bit for those to activate okay so there we go one of them so the one on scorch has activated all right um, so um, what, what we'll see as those tests are performed if if one of them um, failed they'll like as you see I have a few up here that are in a critical failed state right now um, those will um, change state here and then also I would get a corresponding um, alert uh, about that particular site having problems so let's go up to active alerts um, for those so for those three I just created uh, obviously I don't have any active alerts or anything going on with those but um, that's, that's kind of how it works once they all fully activate um, like we just only got one of them oh, there were two of them two of them are active now um, so um, a little while longer that one that one should activate um, actually um, I may remove the agent from this this one actually now that I think about it I think this one is actually pointing to a different maybe reporting to a different SCOM environment um, I have to double check that but uh, that's that's essentially how that would work for those um, going out connecting and, and testing various different sites. So we'll go to web application status. So just kind of give us kind of a dashboard view as if you, as you have various different groupings of various different tests. I mean you kind of see them all the status of all of them collectively in this view here. Is that doing there okay it's starting to come up so here is kind of a, a dashboard that will kind of show some of that data as it start um, collecting that data so a lot of the stuff I don't have yet since you just activated this but over time as those start activating we can kind of start seeing though those uh, performance metrics kind of in a sing in a centralized kind of dashboard here and um, we'll start seeing those metrics and kind of see them graph and change over time and then also um, those test statuses as those start coming in we can see see those over here so one thing I, I didn't cover um, is that you can associate a uh, location tag with particular agents um, I didn't do that in, in this because um, um, it will populate that so the most I'll see all these are showing up as undefined uh, but that is something you can do um, so just visually you'll say no save um, you weren't sure where scorched MSS one is like say if this is in Europe you could tag it with a location of Europe or wherever it, or a particular data center name or, or whatever you want to tag it with um, just for the purpose of this I, I did I didn't do that because that's a, it's a separate um, process to to do that part of it all right but yeah so so more more and more of this is starting to starting to light up uh, as you go um, so um, how this is work from this dashboard, um, if I had some metrics, as I check the box next to SCOM 2012, it'll go and populate the metrics that have been collected um, down here in the graph. But uh, it hasn't been it hasn't been quite 10 minutes yet. Um, so our very first um, test and collection interval probably has not quite happened yet, uh, but that should happen um, briefly. All right, but, but we won't wait for that. But um, that's just kind of how that works. So we're gonna go ahead and minimize out of that. But yeah, that's that's kind of a high level look at how um, web application availability monitoring works and how you can configure that and, and get that going. Um, so it's not um, doesn't take too long, um, but it's very, very powerful. It can collect a lot of diff good information, um, monitor a lot of various different websites from various different locations, all using um, SCOM um, built in native tools. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.